nice. <laughs> uh, my name is Elena Bartel and I'm very glad to introduce you to Casa Bartel. That's a home, first of all, and then it's a place also to come and enjoy the Tuscan landscape and countryside. Casa Bartel is also a small community because there are a group of family living here and every, every season there are people coming from all over the world. So today I'm going to show you a little bit around and uh, of course the, the garden but especially I want to show you the smallest of our house that it's a, it's a tree house. So it's, a, it's about living up in the air uh, surrounded by uh, tree branches. So this is the tree house, it was built by my dad uh, about seven years ago and uh, it was a present for myself and my brother because he never had a chance to build a tree house when we were kids so when I turned 40 suddenly he thought it was last chance. Well, the house has a, it's a, it's a self-efficient, it has a, a bedroom but also has a small kitchen and a bathroom so you can find here everything you need especially in the summer months but also it works also in the winter because people when they come here they just spend a few days so it's really a retreat for them so they during the day they go visit things in town or in the countryside and then they come back and have this feeling of home because they can cook themselves and they can enjoy the landscape. And this is the, bed the bedroom and the other thing we added here is this blackboard so everybody can, can write and leave messages. And it's, uh, it's fun because every time it's different, so there are people drawing here, writing, making jokes, uh, leaving notes for next visitors, it's really very uh, various. How big is this space in total? It's about 35 square meters. On the inside? Mm -hmm. House ventilation is very important, especially in the summer months. It's also nice because you feel in the landscape, so visually and also the, air, the fresh air coming in. So it's super transparent if you just do a 360 uh, video, so you can see how, what's the feeling of the trees. And of course, this also the feeling of the seasons, because it's very different, the landscape. Apart from olive trees that are evergreen, but the, the woods around us change color radically through the season, so it's also a different experience depending on when you decide to come to Tuscany. Okay, so here is the kitchen. It's a kitchenette, but you can, you can cook an Italian pasta very easily. So you have everything you need. You have a fridge, you have a sink, you have a, a little stove, and you can enjoy the, land, the terrace and eating there. We also you know, bring breakfast in the morning, so you can cook your own tea, coffee and milk, and then we leave people fresh pastries in the morning, so they can test some Italian sweets. The first and most important design goal was to uh, raise the house off the ground to be surrounded by trees. And those trees were perfect because they were already spaced in a way that you could play with them, but they were not on the way. So the terrace plays around one of them, and then the rest is just the glass um, that is the enclosure of the building that, you know, kind of establish the relationship with the rest of the trees. And then the other thing was to make it look like it was always been here, so not like a, you know, spaceship coming yeah, not, from the... Not from super the, new. No, no. So, so my dad decided to use rust materials, or he rusted uh, on purpose some of them when mm -hmm. they were new. And then the rest was using uh, salvage material. So, for example, the floor inside and outside is made with the scaffolding wood. 
that is it's it's already used itself and it's clean so it's uh, it has this patina that uh, it gives the feeling of uh, an old space mm -hmm. and it's the same inside outside so the idea is again to feel that you are in inside outside an indoor outdoor space and then the stair that is the ladder the stair that is very nice it's a, it's a recycle as well so it was a piece that my dad found in the market and then he thought he always kept it safe in a storage and then when he designed this house he thought oh that's perfect so same with the stove for example it was my original stove in my house and then we moved it here when finally I had a, a proper heating system in my house uh, objects as well so those are boxes from um, a pharmacy in Switzerland that we bought probably 25 years ago something like that we are very object um, addict so we always buy them collect them and store them and use them and move them around so typologies wise so this uh, this the idea was to use as much space as possible for the bedroom that it's also you know the living room if you wish and it's also connected with the terrace as much as possible and then so and it's transparent as much as possible so one third of the space is taken by those uh, services spaces and they are in the opaque part of the house but the other thing that was added is a walkway all the way around so when you are in the terrace you can walk to the back of the house and back to the front so it's understood as one object no as one uh, volume no object one, one volume even if it's parted into two and there is still two big windows openable windows in the bathroom and in uh, one in the bathroom one in the kitchen so the envelope, it's almost the same everywhere beside the back wall. Mm -hmm. And then in the back wall there is also a window that has a, um, a, a Venetian inside that is uh, electric, so it's powered, so you can uh, open can and, uh, and close it. Yeah, and I always make a joke and I always say to people that if they, they have, uh, if they open it during the shower, they will have discount. <laughs> So this is the bathroom, you have the back side of the blackboard as well, so you can play here. So. And this is the this is the shower and that's the Venetian. This bathroom seems so big. Yeah, exactly. Like so that's that's the other thing. The use of the mirror. You always mm -hmm. Um, the mirrors are always placed in places where they help the perspective to to be longer. This is from uh, a train, so it's very minimal because it was designed to be in a train bathroom, <laughs> no, like an old one, 1800 probably. We, we suggest to um, save as much water as possible, and it's a tree house, so it has a store for for hot water. So there's 80 liters. But if you don't like open the shower and go for a walk and then come back expecting to have hot water, you're fine. But it's about not just about living in a tree house; it's about you know living a more sustainable way. I would suggest. couple who lives here, uh, they are like my second parents. We know each other since I was a kid. And they have the green tan, so they're very good in the garden and I'm learning from them, so I'm making my kitchen garden here as well. Now those are fava beans, they're still too small. It's interesting, until you don't grow yourself, you don't figure it out. Even simple things like, uh, I was expecting them 
to grow like that, but huh? they actually grow, they grow up. upside down, or in my imagine upside down, refer to my imagination. This room was for, uh, you know, to store lemon trees in the winter to keep them warm. Then became a storage for many years. Then when I came back from Alabama, I thought oh, I need a studio. This is perfect, nice light, and I'm in like in the middle of the compound. So when you, people come here uh, to go to the tree house, then I can welcome them. And so the location is perfect. The space is very good. The light is great. It's a little tiny. I'm already feeling it all, but. Uh, so then I emptied it and make it to my uh, printing press workshop. So I got these three presses. This one is my main, this is the main one. And so now, apart spending my best time here and do my projects, then I do workshops. I'm on Airbnb, so people can come and join me for a few hours and test and experiment with ink. <music> This is uh, like a typical Italian compound. It's based on the fact that mums cooks very well and that is very generous, so kids never leave, substantially. So here is where uh, my parents live and where myself and my brother have a, a house. But we also rent other apartments or, or small houses to people who want to share this lifestyle with us. We are very nearby Florence, we are only 10 minutes from the from the Duomo, so it's a convenient place to live, to then go and work in the center. Um, so it's a small community, and uh, but we, we like to understand it as a, like a small community, but also a large family. So the idea is like on Sunday we share lunches, or there is a space where, uh, apart from the pool and the tennis court, but we also have a courtyard where there are facilities to cook, so you know, I may have my friends and then my neighbor has his friends and then we decide to have lunch all together. So it's about enjoying things, sharing the enjoyable part of life, but also sometimes it's about helping each other. So, for example, I have a three years and a half uh, old uh, daughter and sometimes my neighbor take care of her while I'm away or I'm at work. So, yeah, it's, it's again, it's about sharing uh, resources, substantially. For me, the biggest benefit is that, like, uh, uh, to have friends around you. Um, probably the biggest challenge is to uh, be able to be a, a good neighbor. So, or sometimes you may not want to see anybody and you may have to say hello. But uh, I think this place is designed in a, in a manner that uh, you don't have to share if you don't feel like in a day. But you can easily do it if you feel that you want to. But it's also a challenge for me to keep a balance between the proportion. So um, of the amount of families that live here full time with the amount of people that in, go in and out. Because I don't want this to be uh, uh, holiday home but at the same time I like to have people coming from all over the world and bring their own stories and share them with us. Mm -hmm.